These words of mine will be eventually heard by the world. They will tear to pieces my country. They will bring to light the true colors of the Chinese Communist Party. It will embarrass the friends of the ruling party, assuming they have the traits of reverence and value of human conscience. They kidnapped me on a Friday night around 8 p.m. It was not the first time the communist police have kidnapped me, but I knew this time would be different. Gao Jisheng, you m****, your date with death is today. Kill the m****. They swore at me repeatedly and threatened me. Then the beating began, first with the electric baton. Nothing but the noises of the baton and my scream could be heard. Don't let Rest, shouted their leader, whose name was Wang. Then he slapped me repeatedly and ordered my clothing removed. Neil, you. Listen, you son. Let me tell you the truth. This is no longer just between you and the government. It's personal. They continued the shock treatments and began to shock my genitals. I begged him to stop, but the more I begged, the more they laughed. The tortures continued throughout the night. They blew cigarette smoke into my eyes. I could feel the tears hit my leg. This continued for about two hours until my eyes were swollen shut. Wang came to speak with me again. I couldn't see him just to hear his voice. These men are heavy hitters, gal. They were trained for this and chosen by the higher-ups just for you. He explained why I had been kidnapped, but I already knew. You wrote that letter to the American Congress. You are a traitor. And the American Congress is just like my This is China. We are communists! To kill you would be like stepping on an ant! How dare you write to the American dogs? You asked for this beating, gal! I had written to the Congress and to the Chinese communists, my former comrades. I couldn't let the torture of innocent and of Christians go unheard. But I hadn't asked for this beating. They told me the third phase of torture would begin. They brought out toothpicks and told me they would poke my lamp. I didn't know what they meant, and I didn't want to know. Wang told me, You have accused the Chinese of horrendous torture. Well, today you get to experience them all. And I'm no longer afraid of you writing about this. There's zero possibility of you ever leaving this place alive. The torture continued, and I prayed for death for God to save me from the unbearable pain of the toothpicks. I cannot say the things they did to me. They will remain unspoken forever. I finally passed out and dreamed of my kids. When I woke up, they were shining a flashlight in my eyes. It was now the third day of my torture. My tears had turned into blood and all I heard was their laughter. The electric baton was then placed in my mouth. I couldn't bear the thought of what it will feel like. I prayed again to die. Then Wang explained why he didn't destroy my mouth. We need you to talk tonight, you We need you to confess about all the women you had sex with. We will not take no for an answer. Then they shocked me with three batons at the same time. My body convulsed on the floor, shaking uncontrollably. I begged them again to stop. Then the toothpicks began. 
I could not bear it any longer. After repeated torture, I told them anything they wanted to hear. I signed anything they want me to sign. They also made me put my fingerprints on the documents. I cannot find words to describe the pain I felt at that moment. And even after signing the documents, the torture continued, and I was made to sing, "Communism is good. Communism is good." In this barbarous environment, humanity and human dignity are rendered powerless. I was released 50 days later, and the paper I signed was shared with my wife and others. The tortures I endured were truly beyond the human imagination. All that I have told you is true. These evil acts make it clear how far the leaders of the Chinese Communist Party are willing to go in their evil crimes against humanity in order to protect their monopoly on power. They told me repeatedly, if I ever reported what they did to me to the outside world, then I would die, and I am willing to die for this cause. I leave you with this thought: the increased level of confidence of the Chinese Communist Party in treating its people with increased cold-blooded brutality and cruelty is the direct result of our silence.